Hi there, everybody, and welcome to today's Tuesday Teaching Tips. Now, hopefully you're a little bit curious about the title of this one, Goldfish Bowl Practice. Um, so let me tell you a bit about it. Now, my good friend and colleague, Graham Fitch, who uh, has the Practicing the Piano blog, um, he talks a lot about practice routines and he talks a lot about isolation. And over in our Curiosity Lounge, where all our members gather to have a little chat, somebody was saying, I really struggle with the idea of isolation. And a lot of children, they don't get it. They don't quite understand what isolation is. Now, this had happened to me as well um, a, a year or so ago, and I thought through it few different approaches of how you could explain putting little passages into isolation yeah that's the idea that you might take a bar or two of a piece that's particularly tricky and you isolate it so you just work on those passages and as I say the word isolation um, when I tried it out on a few pupils mm, it was kind of blank faces so I was trying to think of another way of describing isolation and I came up with the idea of a goldfish bowl goldfish bowl practice now using picture like this most kids get the idea that you start off with lots of goldfish here and you take just one of the goldfish out and you put them in a bowl all by themselves and this is then goldfish practice now um i introduce this to my pupils i make a big thing about it i i have a goldfish bowl which isn't really a goldfish bowl it's it's a vase as you can see and it's got these beautiful tulips in today which i wasn't going to take out but i would use that i'd have that empty um to introduce this to the pupils in in a particular week and then i have some little goldfish things here and when we find a bar or a couple of bars that need some goldfish bowl practice, we'll write the number of the bar on the fish. They can choose whichever fish they like. So we might write here, for example, bar seven. And we might also write the kind of practice they're going to do. So it might be a clap and count, or it might be um, a snail speed, in other words, very slowly, or something like that. So I'm going to put snail at the bottom, or it might be a magic number three practice or something. And then that will just go in the goldfish bowl. And in one lesson, probably in the second lesson as well, I'd make a big thing about making sure that they understand this concept of goldfish bowl practice. So it's when you take one bar and you put it into the bowl all by itself. Once you've done it, on a couple of times for a couple of times then the children learn what you mean when you just say goldfish bowl i don't have to get the goldfish bowl out every time i don't have to get my little fish out i'll just say so what would you need to do with that would, what what would be some goldfish bowl practice this week on that and they would tell me the bars that would need to either they would write down in their practice notes or i put on cadenza or something like that so the idea is that you develop behind this, the idea behind this is that you develop practice studio routines that you don't have to explain continuously, but you use continuously and they have a name. You've heard me mention some already. I've talked about the uh, uh, magic number three. That means play something three times. Um, I've talked about the clap and count. So again, that means clap and count the rhythm before you start. I've talked as well about one other, and I can't think what it was at the moment. You'll tell me in a moment, I'm sure. But um, so having these studio routines and goldfish bowl practice is just another routine that I use as a common language because it cuts down on so much time. Another one is plus one as well. Um, and I would really recommend that you develop your own studio routines. You can have your own language that just is for your studio, and the slightly wackier it is, then the more memorable it is. Introduce it in one week, reinforce it in another week, and then just keep using those same terms. I know many of you have heard me say the importance of being persistent and consistent. So keep using the same things over and over in the same way and explaining them in the same way. Okay, so that's it for me for today. I've been talking about goldfish bowl practice and how that can really help children to isolate certain bars or certain passages so that they can work on it in their own practice time. And also the importance of having studio routines that everybody understands hope that's really helpful and uh, look forward to seeing you again next week happy teaching till then bye for now hi joanna i can see joanna's there before i go bye bye